Justice um, in Glasgow. A proud feminist and trade unionist, Sam is one to watch in the future. Thank you. The Decent Work Zone campaign mobilises precarious workers and the unemployed. It's a campaign set up to organise workers who wouldn't be traditionally targeted by trade unions. The Decent Work Zone campaign has five key demands. Access to a trade union, a wage we can live on, guaranteed hours each week, safe, secure work, and training and development opportunities. This campaign came from the idea from the fast food workers in America. They fought for union recognition, decent hours, and a decent wage. And we've seen them win. We took a day of action in New York, where workers went on strike, demanding that their campaign is listened to. On that same day, the New York Wage Board voted to pay 200,000 men and women fast food workers in the union $15 an hour, an industry which makes $20 billion a year. And by 2018, all workers in the state will be paid the $15 an hour. In a country where union membership is low, union recognition, there's lack of it, and where the private sector runs, rules the roost, if they can make change there, we can do it here. We <laughs> we organise workers who are not in a typically organised workplace. It's about changing the face of our movement, the rise of zero hours contracts, the continuous cuts to our basic services, the Tory living wage, which says if you're under 25, your work isn't as valued as much as somebody over that age. This is creating a race to the bottom. This isn't a cost saving exercise. This isn't a way of raising efficiency. This is a Tory ideological class war. We as a labour movement have always stood up for the masses, not the few. And this is why the campaign is integral to our movement. And now I'd like to introduce Erin McCauley, who is a worker on a zero hours contract. Thank you very much. Imagine being 18 and not just landing your first job in a new city at a very busy Christmas period, but landing your dream job working in the Celtic store. <laughs> working for a club that you've supported all your life, a club whose history and values are close to your heart, a job you're excited about, you're overwhelmingly passionate about and want to put time into. Who would have known that this dream and optimism of the workplace would have been crushed at such a young age. I now have a scar on my chin, a scar that will remind me for the rest of my life of a zero hour contract, a scar that will remind me forever of the uncertainty, of the insecurity, of the stress and anxiety, of the, and of the impacts, not just financial impacts, that comes with a zero hour contract. I was lucky enough if I got five hours a week at the busiest time of the year, despite emphasising to my employer that I had no, no exams and my coursework was done by mid-November. I so desperately needed hours, considering I pay £632 a month for shared accommodation, which in itself is a national disgrace. <laughs> I got put into so much stress and anxiety because I couldn't budget, I couldn't plan ahead, I couldn't save, I didn't ever know when I was working, how long I was working for, how much I would be making, I couldn't make plans for Christmas in case I was called in. This was a job that I felt so passionately about, yet I was left uncertain, alienated and I had to make choices to survive. The scar on my chin is because I took a seizure. I took a seizure because of the stress and anxiety that this unstable job was placing upon my life. I started taking diet pills and food supplements as a way of saving, budgeting and sacrificing eating to pay my rent. I suffered an unhidden eating disorder because that was the only control that I had in my life. That same Friday night that I get took into hospital, my employer phoned me at quarter to 11 at night asking if I could work four hours the next day. When I said to him, I'm actually in hospital now getting stitches in my chin, 
the only the only response was, okay, so you can't work tomorrow. I need to know. That next day, I went in and I showed him that I actually did have stitches in my chin, that I did have a black eye, and I stood up to him and said that I needed that weekend off. I needed that weekend off to rest. But that, but that came with consequences. I was left that full Christmas period and New Year's with no hours, no contact, and I got a letter through in mid-January of redundancy, and I thank you for my work. I was felt to feel unworthy and incapable. I was made and felt and was felt to be portrayed and unreliable and get con and got punished when my hours been cut. I was made to feel like that, that I had done something wrong. I had felt I felt victimized and was left for that long Christmas period with no communication, no hours, no income, just pure uncertainty. But that's the reality. These employers don't take into consideration in your life. They don't care that you've got a mental health problem. They don't care about the barricades that you've come over to get to this point in the first place. They don't care that you've got rent to pay or no food in the fridge. They don't care about how passionately you feel about this job. They don't care that you've had to structure your full life around these small hours. They don't care how you're getting home after that late shift. They don't care that this job could be the only source of income that you have. They don't care that you feel victimized or discriminated or exploited or bullied. All these employers care about is profit. The problem with our nation is not that we are not wealthy enough to provide sustainable, well-paid jobs and hours. In fact, we're one of the most richest countries in the world. The biggest problem and most damaging problem with our nation and economy is greed. I'm not just the economic future of this country. I'm currently affected. I'm living amongst a generation who are being exploited like never before, who live amongst economic and job insecurity. But it's platforms like this, where we are actually given the opportunity to vocalize and to be listened to, that gives me hope. I wouldn't have ever known that these practices were wrong if I wasn't an active member of the trade union movement, which is worrying, considering the amount of young people in work who are not in a trade union. We can ensure that young people have economic stability, do have jobs that pay good wages and provide sustainable hours and allow us to live, not just get by, regardless of our age. But this can only be done if the old, the young, the in work and the out of work stand as a collective force. Decent work is a human right. And it's now more than ever that our young workers need a voice in parliament to end zero hour contracts and as a united movement fight to end precarious work once and for all. Thanks. Good afternoon, conference. My name is Liam Gleason, and I'm a proud member of Unite. I want to stress to you today the importance of trade unions to young people and to the Scottish Labour Party. Low-paid, insecure work is a reality for thousands of young people across this country. Profits in the service sector are growing, yet the benefits of this are not being shared with our class. Um, they are not being shared with the real wealth creators in society, the workers. Income inequality is rising. Wages are stagnating. Young people are living in in-work poverty and in many cases suffering with work-induced mental health issues. Now this degradation of working conditions has not been met with sufficient workplace resistance. The labour movement, let's be frank, is at its weakest in decades. Union membership has halved since 1980. Investment in our economy is geared towards financial speculation and property rather than manufacturing infrastructure. The minimum wage has become the standard wage. The Labour Party has to fight this. The Labour Party has to be at the forefront of the Labour movement. We have to be shown to act, be actually concerned with the day-to-day -day working conditions of ordinary people. Labour needs to take a leading role 
in the workplace. We need to be on the picket lines. We need to be active within these campaigns, such as Decent Work Zone and Better Than Zero. Critically, we need to engage with those most exploited in the workplace, which is young people. Most young people today are not in a trade union. I'd argue that many do not know what trade unions even do. When I started working in my current pub, I was the only union member. Yet people my age are those that need trade unions the most. We are the most likely to be on a zero hours contract. We won't even be paid the government's mockery of a living wage. Um, many of my peers are on temporary contracts and high turnover unskilled jobs with little to no chance of career progression. We cannot afford our rent. We cannot afford to go for higher education. We cannot escape the minimum wage. Now, Labour in the trade union movement can help us, yet the average age of a trade unionist is 40. The average age of a trade union rep is 55. I can praise the work of campaigns like ours. I can thank the party, young, Scottish Young Labour, Scottish Labour Young Socialists, and Tezia Dugdale for endorsing our campaign, but it's not enough. We need to get support from all levels of the party, and we need young people to get actively involved in these campaigns, and we need the Labour Party to spearhead these movements. Now, now, I'm not here today to chastise the old guard of the party for ignoring young voices. <laughs> Nor am I here today to criticise anyone who isn't already involved in a trade union. Instead, I'm trying to make the point that not only will the working class of this country benefit from a strong trade union movement, but also that if we ever want to recover in Scotland, we need to take that leading role. Now, young people don't associate our party with workplace issues. The SNP are posturing to become the natural home for Scottish trade unions. Our neglect of trade unions has, let, has have crippled our support within their political structures, especially amongst the young. Now, me and Erin sit on the Unite Youth Committee in Scotland. There's about 20 places. Me and Erin are the only Labour members on that committee. Senior figures in a variety of trade unions have been endorsing nationalist parties. Only 15% of young people are going to back Labour because they see the SNP as progressive. Voters trust the Scottish Government more on, than trade unions on issues surrounding the work the workers that those unions are meant to represent. Our support in working class communities and workplaces is crashing down around us. Nationalism is hegemonic in Scottish politics and is our, as socialists it is our job to return class to the political agenda. We can do that but we need a vibrant social movement geared towards issues surrounding working people and one that challenges the prevalent nationalist narrative. <laughs> social movements need the support of the young. And I was delighted to see this surge of young people getting involved with Jeremy Corbyn's leadership campaign. However, we can't just sit around and be self-congratulatory. That's the job of the SNP. <laughs> now, we need Labour, young Labour, Labour students, Labour Young Socialists, the CFS, the Scottish Labour PLP, any Labour grouping you can think of to get actively involved with these grassroots campaigns for the sake of young workers like Erin and for the sake of our party. This is our fight. We need to champion it. I am both a trade unionist and a Labour Party member. To me, the two are inseparable. The cause of the Labour movement. <laughs> the cause of the Labour movement, the cause of the trade union movement is the cause of the Labour Party. Please, conference, get involved. Help us deliver for young people. Help us deliver for the working class and help us deliver for labour. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, can, I, can I just introduce Jamie Caldwell, Unite Communities Coordinator in Scotland? Jeez, man, what acts to follow. <laughs> I get to work with these people day in, day out, and it is fantastic and inspiring to see so many young people actually standing up and st uh, standing strong against what's happening. This, campaign's, uh, this campaign starts with the individual and brings them into the collective, giving people their own place and space to develop identifying talents that we can build, share, and utilize, showing them, to st showing them how to step outside their comfort zone, growing them as a person, which in turn grows our movement. For a better life and a better future for all. 
This is something I hold dear to my heart. Dyslexic at school, I faced being put into a box. Going into the workplace, I thought life would be different, but seeing myself being put into a box because of my age. Time and time again, I'd hear prejudiced prejudice thoughts of what, mani what work management thought I could and couldn't do. I somehow had a bad attitude towards work for questioning things. And I thought to myself, surely as a company, you'd want to get the best out of your workers and what they could do, utilising the skills of your staff. Surely as an employer, you want your worker to be happy so they're more productive. To me, this made business sense. It was not until I got involved in trade unions I seen the changes you could bring to your workplace and how inspiring our movement is with such a rich history. A rich history of normal people standing together, fighting for the rights that made work life better and winning. A rich history I was never taught in school. The system failed me, but my movement, the movement, yeah, my movement, and my family wouldn't allow me to fail myself. And what a great message to give to young people. You can make positive change. You don't need to float through life accepting things as they are. The chance to work on this campaign with so many inspirational young people is a dream come true for me. To fight, ag to fight against young adults, young adults seeing their future ripped out their hands and optimism crushed at the first steps. The false choice of get a job or get an education. Education that sees young people shackled with debt for the rest of their life and what jobs? Precarious work. We have a Tory government not giving under 25s the, their phony living wage. In their words, they're not as productive. Giving the green light for companies and society to take a certain view on young work, workers in the workplace along with the explosion of zero-hour contracts that see you with no rights, no sick pay, no holiday pay, no maternity rights. These are rights that we fought for and won. <laughs> and you come up against the argument, but they're flexible. They're flexible for who? The bosses. You heard Erin's experience of zero-hour contracts the scars mentally and physically that she experienced. A scar on her chin reminding her every day of her first work experience. And these stories echo across the country. That's why Aussies Unite say that zero hour contracts must be banned outright. Of course, there is a small percentage of people that agree with zero hour contracts. But after meeting hundreds and hundreds of young people that have owned zero hour contracts, I've not met one that agrees with them yet. And to quote Spock and the IMAX, that's quite a funny. Um, <laughs> logic clearly dictates the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That's why our young activists turn on uh, Sports Direct. Mike Ashley's use of 90% zero hour contracts, an ideological war of how staff should be treated in his eyes, search before they go home, a culture, and what a culture of zero hour contracts creates. Challenge anything, you find yourself with no shifts. A woman giving birth in the warehouse, a man lay dead in the uh, workplace canteen for four hours. Our activists have taken this message to the streets. Demos, flash mobs with new ways of protesting, banner drops at Newcastle Football Stadium, as well as iBox, where fans are affected by this man's greed. Given the, getting the message into the media and capturing the imagination of others of what can be achieved when we stand together. And I will say this, Mike Ashley, we won't stop until you change your ways. We have won. <laughs> we have won the campaigns against Pizza Express and Las Iguanas stealing staff tips, and we will win in Sports Direct. Because if we let this treatment of workers goes on, go on, it's not so much a race to the bottom, but a sleepwalk. 
We have organised young people through art, music and culture. And this might seem oversimplistic, but put social back into socialism. Activists getting to know one another and finding a common cause. We have clear goals, clear vision. We ask for your support and to get young people involved in our campaign. We will keep growing and inspiring, building confidence till the, boss can't, the bosses can't ignore us. And politicians don't just listen to us, but get out in the street and campaign with us. So as a young guy, I always imagined if I ever made a movie, it would be great to be in the cinema. And our young activists have created a video on the TU bill. It doesn't seem like the best thing to pick to create a video on. It's a very lengthy process, but I think um, what we've achieved with a, a three-minute video explains the TU bill very, uh, very well. And this is an issue that we need young people to understand that this is a bill going through Parliament that affects all of us. If young people don't have trade unions fighting in their corner, they probably won't miss them because they've never had trade unions. So we need to educate young people on trade unions and we need to get this bill, um, raise awareness of this bill. It might not be a summer blockbuster, but let's hope we can get this message out there as much as we can. Thank you very much, Conte. <laughs> Before unions, there was you, and there was your boss. You could ask for things, Can I maybe have some more pay? Maybe just have but you might just hear... You're fired! Today, this is your union. Strong union membership helps workers redress the balance of power to improve pain conditions, fight for a stronger economy, and a society in which no one is left behind. It's no surprise that the Tories would like to prevent us from doing this by delivering the Trade Union Bill. Stopping you and your union rep from resolving and improving workplace conditions. Removing your ability to pay your union membership in the same way you pay your pension. The UK already has the tightest picket laws of any Western country. Raising the threshold for industrial action, your human right to withdraw your labour, undermining your role in the workforce by bringing in agency workers to stop you and your union from actively campaigning on issues such as the living wage, TTIP and getting trade unionists elected to Parliament. We interrupt our programme to bring you this important message. The trade union bill is progressing through Westminster it will represent the biggest attack on democracy, fairness and prosperity since the days when Thatcher put power into the hands of the few at the expense of the many. If you take the individuals away from the service, they're gone. And that pressure is then put on other people. We can't go on like this forever. We need to actually do something about it. We're here to say that this austerity measure has to stop. And if they don't change their mind, then we will change the government. Unions can and do have a, an exceptional role. It can help organise people to campaign against cuts. We can challenge it and we can change it. We rely on people on the ground and communities and in the workforce coming to us and telling us about the impact of austerity on them and on their communities. And the trade unions are a key part of that because they've got the finger on the pulse in terms of people in uh, different workplaces, different sectors across the country. So we are hearing from local government, we're hearing from the finance sector, we're hearing from transport, the construction industry. Unite members across all of these sectors are telling a very familiar story. So we, as the trade union movement, have to defeat this bill. We have to defeat the austerity that goes with it. But we also have to raise the sights and raise the hopes and raise the imagination of people of what the world can be like. I love you. Now, back to our show. The trade union movement has a strong history of bringing people together to protect their rights. We can defeat this attack and protect our own human rights. We can defeat this bill by standing together and fighting for each other. Join a union. Get active. Protect our rights. 
Cullinan, and yeah, that was my voice that was in the video. <laughs> um, I joined this campaign when I was still a young Unite activist. I was on a low hour, low pay job. I've now managed to break my cycle of precarious work. And now that I'm on a living wage, the impact that that's had on my life, mentally and physically, has been incredible. So I'll continue to be involved in this campaign because I believe that every young person deserves that opportunity. This isn't about individuality. This is about standing together and creating change as a collective. Now, you've heard from Erin the true reality of being on a zero contract. It's not just the inability to fund your life, but it's the detrimental effect it has on your mental health. These contracts are exploitative and they're demoralizing. They're telling young people that they, they are not worthy of having decent work. It's not giving them a hope to find a secure future. Many people like you to believe that they are flexible. As we've heard, they're only flexible for the employer. It takes any control that that worker has over their own life and puts it straight into the hands of bosses. These are corporate bosses who care more about the profits that they make than the, the well-being and the health of the people that they actually employ. We have had young people up and down this country join our campaign many of whom had never heard of a trade union or had never been involved with anything political. Now, they had been stamped on and pushed to the edge for so long by exploitative bosses that they finally realised they had to stand up against them. They now realise that they have rights and that they need to take that fight to protect those rights into their own hands. Now, we have five basic pledges for decent work in this campaign, as you heard at the start. Now, these, these pledges have been taken to councils up and down the country. And my local Labour, um, Labour councillor, sorry, who's in this room somewhere, took them to my local council, which is run by the SNP. Now, we asked them for their support, and the response that we got back was absolutely disgusting. They put in black and white and stated that our demands were unreasonable and they were just impossible to implement. Now, conference, it should never be unreasonable for a young worker to ask for a wage that they can actually live on. It should, it should not be impossible to get rid of zero-hour contracts and give a guaranteed number of hours to a worker each week. Now, that's why I'm actually really grateful to be standing here and this platform and really grateful to our party's leadership of Kezia and Alex to allow us to be here today and tell you about our campaign and about this issue. This issue is too important to not get behind. This campaign is too important to not get involved in. We run the risk of letting these growing working practices become the norm up and down this country. Not having enough income to fund your life just becomes the norm. Not having the courage to voice your opinion in your workplace without the fear of getting sacked, that just becomes the norm. These are things that our movement has fought long and hard for, and it is our fight to make sure that their rights are protected. So, what I ask is for everyone in here, it is great that we have got the support of the leadership, but we need your support. We need every single Labour member to come out with us and stand on the streets and be visible to people to show them that we are actively trying to create change and not just talking about it. We need to prove to young people that we are the party for them. We were formed for ordinary people, the many, not the few. We are still that party and we will still continue that fight. We need to prove to those young workers that we can be their voice. We can be their voice on the street, we'll be their voice in the workplace, but we'll be their voice in Parliament as well. Now, as both says, everyone else has said in their speeches before, you know, this is a political and ideological attack on our class and our young people. Don't be mistaken that this is turning into a class war. And we as the Labour Party need to make sure that we are on the winning side of that war for our young people and for our movement. So thanks.